Having been in the real estate industry for more than a decade, I have interacted with many home buyers who are so confused and that is why I have made a complete educational guide on buying an under construction property in collaboration with Marathon Group, a renowned developer in India with over 52 years of experience and with over 80 completed real estate projects. In this second video of our series, I will teach you all how to set up your budgets to buy your dream home. This video may be a little long, so please watch this video till the very end as this will make you understand real estate and your personal finances much better. Buying a property can be a daunting process as most human beings can afford to buy only one property in their entire lifetime. With so many parameters like home loan eligibility, interest rates, pre-EMIs and down payments, setting your budget can seem like an impossible task. After all, you don't want to be too conservative and miss out on a much better and bigger home. And at the same time, you don't want to be too ambitious and overexpose yourself to stress due to heavy EMI payments. Firstly, we must understand that buying an under construction property is very different from buying a ready to move in property as the payment schedules are very different. Hence, you can get more payment flexibility in under construction properties and therefore a lot of home buyers can end up stretching their budgets. Now let's take an example of a particular under construction flat as per the table. As you can see, the flat cost is rupees 1 crore and along with additional government charges of stamp duty at 6%, GST at 5% and registration at 30,000 rupees, the total all-inclusive cost of the flat goes to 1 crore, 11 lakhs and 30,000 rupees. Now as per the construction link payment plan, you would get 3 years to pay the 1 crore, 11 lakhs and 30,000. Whereas if this apartment were to be ready to move in, you would have to immediately liquidate all your savings to pay this entire amount at once in case of self-funding and in case you were to take a home loan against this property in that case you would take you would pay your 20 percent as down payment initially and then start your loan immediately from day one now consider this example in the table again for a home having an agreement value of rupees one crore as per this payment schedule if you're supposed to pay 40 percent of the agreement value to the builder in the first year and assuming you have taken a home loan at 2080 which means 20 percent is your own contribution and the remaining 80 percent you pick up from the bank in that case in the first year after making your down payment of 20 percent you will take a loan of 20 lakhs from the bank now assuming the home loan interest rate is seven and a half percent per annum in that case for the first year on the amount 20 lakhs that is disbursed to the builder by the bank your pre-emi will be 12,500 rupees per month now obviously this pre-emi amount will increase every year as in when more amount is disbursed to the builder by the bank accordingly now that you've understood how the payment schedule and home loans work differently for under construction versus ready properties we will now dive into setting up budgets the first step to doing this is calculating your home loan eligibility now for salaried employees calculating a home loan eligibility is pretty straightforward check your gross monthly salary that is before taxes and other deductions on your pay slips now assuming your gross monthly salary is rupees 1 lakh in that case most banks consider 60 percent of your gross monthly salary as your emi paying capacity which means here your emi which should be 60 000 rupees so one must calculate backwards and make sure that is EMI against his home loan does not exceed more than 60,000 every month. Another way to calculate your home loan eligibility is on your in-hand monthly salary. Now most lenders consider 60x to even 100x of your in-hand monthly salary as your EMI paying capacity. This may differ bank to bank and in case if you don't have any existing home loan liabilities or any other liabilities, you can even get a home loan of rupees 1 crore on an in-hand monthly salary of rupees 1 lakh. However, before taking any home loan, you must make sure that you can pay the EMI on time without defaulting. You can use any home loan calculator to check out your monthly EMIs. And guys, remember, affordability 
is different from eligibility as per the above EMI calculator on a home loan of rupees 1 crore at an interest rate of 8.5% per annum for a tenure of 20 years we can see that the EMI every month equates to 86,782 rupees so even if you do end up getting a home loan of rupees 1 crore against a monthly enhanced salary of rupees 1 lakh I would highly suggest against it because paying an EMI of 86,782 rupees against a 1 lakh enhanced salary is very hard and stressful. Instead, you must opt for a home loan for rupees 70 lakh at 20 years at an interest rate of 8.5%, which means your EMI in this case will be rupees 60,748 rupees, which is easier, much easier to pay against an enhanced salary of rupees 1 lakh. You must always check your home loan amortization schedule and see whether that is feasible for you. Now that you know that rupees 70 lakh not only fits in your home loan eligibility criteria but also fits in your affordability criteria, we will now calculate your total budget for your home. Now assuming you're taking a home loan of 80% which means 70 lakh rupees equates to 80% of your flat amount which means your total agreement value of your entire home will be 87 lakhs and 50,000 rupees. Therefore, you also must have 17 lakh and 50,000 rupees as an upfront down payment. Make sure you also calculate additional government and other miscellaneous charges. After calculating stamp duty at say 6% depending on your state, registration charges of 30,000, GST at 5%, and other maintenance and car parking charges at rupees 3 lakhs in that case your all-inclusive cost of your house will shoot up to rupees 1 crore and 12,500 rupees hence as per this calculation if your monthly enhanced salary is rupees 1 lakhs you could perhaps afford an all-inclusive home costing 1 crore 12,500 rupees but this is also based on the assumption that you have savings of the initial 20% for your down payment and savings of another 11% that will go towards your stamp duty, GST and other miscellaneous charges. Once you have set your budgets using these methods, make sure you can also afford to pay the monthly maintenance and the annual property tax against your property after buying it. As a general thumb rule, newer constructions have about an annual property tax and annual maintenance equal to about 1% of the total property value. So for example, the property we discussed right now costing 87,50,000, the annual property tax and the annual maintenance could be equal to Rs. 90,000 per year or Rs. 7,500 per month. Now you must be able to afford this Rs. 7,500 per month along with your monthly EMIs too. Hence, it is important to evaluate the home loan amount you are eligible for versus the home loan amount you can pay. Different banks have different eligibility criteria because the home loan rates and the tenure can drastically differ. You can club the income of other multiple people such as your co-applicants, for example, your spouse to increase your overall home loan eligibility. Another pro tip to increase your home loan eligibility is to include your annual bonuses that you're getting from your employer. For self-employed people, there are various methods to calculate the home loan eligibility. Depending on your type of business, home loan eligibility can be calculated on the basis of gross margins, net profits, or sometimes even estimation of income. You must always check with your banker for an accurate home loan eligibility calculation. It is strongly recommended that you get a home loan pre-sanction from a bank before you start hunting for your perfect home. A pre-sanction is a sanction based on your eligibility before you have identified the property. Most banks have an easy pre-sanction process where you have to submit basic documents such as your salary slips, bank statements, income tax statements, and your KYC. Now, these calculations are very subjective depending on your circumstances. For example, if you're currently living on rent, then perhaps affording the monthly rent along with the monthly pre-EMI could be unaffordable. In such a case, you must always push for a payment flexibility plan from your builder. And lastly, you must remember in case you're taking a lot of payment flexibility from your builder and not paying him on time as per the construction link plan, in that case, your per square foot price might be significantly higher as eventually the builder will input 
at those costs as time is equivalent to money. I hope this video has helped you set up your realistic budgets for your dream home and stay tuned for the next video where I'll talk about how to check the legal status of your property on the RERA website.